Oh, hello! I didn't see you there. I am the internet's Bobby Parrish, and you're watching Flav City. Tonight's video is a scrumptious dinner of chicken breast and vegetables. My oh my, it's a complete dinner that happens to be low carb, and by golly, your kids are gonna love it. <laughs> That's a pretty good infomercial, isn't it, you guys? That That's good. awesome. Um, who's having a great day? <laughs> <laughs> you went from 100 people to 73 with that one. No! <laughs> Who's having a great day? You guys, fantastic Wednesday in Chicago. Art and I have been working since literally 10 o'clock this morning nonstop, and that's how we roll. And now we're gonna make a dinner with you guys. Before we get started with the menu and all that good stuff, a little bit of housekeeping. Can you hear me okay? And also, can you hear? Can you hear me, the guy behind the camera known as Art? He's much more than that, but can you hear Art okay? And how does the picture look, right? Does my hair look okay? Are my teeth clean? Let us know in the comments, and once you let us know, yeah, they're already saying, all good. Let us know where you're watching from, right? Leave a comment down below. We love seeing people from all over the world. And here's what we're doing tonight. We literally just made the menu up 45 minutes ago at Whole Foods when we finished filming the, co uh, the coffee video. And then I got home, I'm like, oh my God, it's pretty much a recipe from the cookbook. So we're gonna do spice crusted butter basted chicken breast. It's my fail safe technique and recipe for making chicken breasts that are juicy and not overcooked. We're gonna serve that with blistered green beans in my insane sauce. We all know the insane sauce. You can put it on an old leather shoe and it would be delicious. We're gonna do that instead, put it on green beans instead of a shoe. Uh, and then we're gonna make a crunchy little salad that's my go-to creamy uh, mayonnaise-based uh, salad that is so darn easy. It's gonna be gangbusters. Somebody we just said your teeth look clean. <laughs> You know what? I brush twice a day and I floss twice a day. I used to brush three times a day. Then the dentist said my gums were receding and maybe I'm too aggressive and I'm brushing too much. Too much. So now I cut it down a little Do bit. Do you use electric or a manual toothbrush? I use electric. And when I thought about it, I was going too like aggressive and hard. Should let it do the work. That's the concept. Exactly. Right? And I can't. Okay. I have like control issues and I'm like, no. You just no. need to guide it. Yes. Be the club. And be the club. I'll Tap show. it in. Tap it in, right? What toothpaste? Ooh, I'm going to tell you about that. I'm actually doing a collaboration with the company because it's the same company that makes real salt. They make earth paste. It's a three ingredient or four ingredient uh, toothpaste, all natural, made with Utah bentonite clay. Clay. It's amazing. I have a promo code for you too. Uh, we got Salem Oregon in here. Uh, we got AZ. Rose is going to come soon. She's having a little snacky snack. Yes, the, it's a, do the it's toothpaste. A pasture toothbrush. It's That's pasture raised grass fed toothbrush. and yeah, and toothpaste. <laughs> toothbrush. <laughs> toothbrush. That's what they said. Hello, Bobby and Arturo from Breezy, San Francisco. Ever since last week, we've been calling Art Uncle Farturo. That's it right. just rolls off the tongue so well. Um, so Mississippi's here. Kudos to whoever thought of that. Yes, whoever that was, let Take us know. For it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, exactly. Thank you, unlikely critic. And uh, theories as to who. It Twelve is. pounds. Well, oh. super chat already. Three minutes and nine seconds into it, and the super chat. Wow. From Dana. Dana. Hi from VA. We made your yummy meatballs. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for the super chat. It's a great way to uh, support the channel. I sty update almost 100%. I did all your remedies. I did Johnson's. Uh, we got something called AccuSoft. Art told me it's an eye wipe. I did um, hot compresses like crazy. I stopped the breast milk. By Saturday, Sunday, it was much better. It's pretty much 100% now. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, let's get cooking, you guys. Okay. Organic boar bristle brush. Yeah, don't do don't do that to your gums. That That's sounds bad, interesting, right? Yes. Uh, Carla's loving the cookbook, so we're making two recipes from the cookbook. The Amazon link is down below if you want to share the love. So these are chicken breasts. These are five organic chicken breasts from a company called Pine Manor. They supply a lot of chicken to Whole Foods. But no matter what kind of chicken breast I buy, I always pound them thinner because when you get something like this, it's a little big. It's a little lopsided. I have a chick, I have a video. How cool is this, you guys? I have a video on YouTube that ranks number one for how to cook chicken or how to cook chicken breast on all of YouTube. And then if you type how to cook chicken breast or chicken breast on Google machine, I come up as number one. That is freaking crazy, dude. How amazing is that? We made that video a while back and it was, it was a winner, winner chicken dinner is what it was. So the first rule of chicken club is you don't talk about chicken club. But actually, you do talk about it. Otherwise, no one's going to know what to do. Somebody said, greetings from the International Space Station. Yeah, if, right. If that's real, well, come on. greetings right back at If you. you're really watching, for sure. And even if you're not, greetings to you. Yeah, anyways. greetings to you anyway. <laughs> do they have strong enough Wi-Fi up there? Oh, to they can do it. And they can do it? We put a man on the moon. Of course we can. <laughs> the question is, why haven't we put a man on the moon again? That's on the docket. I don't, 50 years? 
Let's do it again, homie. It's gonna be practice for Mars. So here's what I do. First, I take off the tender here, save that for later, and put another piece of plastic wrap over the top. Chicken out of the way so I don't get oh, please do, Art, yes. Raw chicken. We're gonna pound it thin, but you wanna do it over two layers of plastic wrap because you don't wanna break the chicken. I take a meat mallet, I've done it with a rolling pin, and I pound down into the side. The last thing you wanna do is tear the meat. If you're having a bad day, this seems like a good way to end it. Right? Oh yeah. yeah, although we don't have bad days around here. Yeah. Every day is a blessed day, if you do. Yeah. And why I take the time to do this is look at my chicken breast now. It's even steven. It's gonna cook even. The biggest problem with big, chick big chicken breasts is they don't cook evenly. Now, from tail to tip, it is one kind of thickness. That's the key to making chicken breast. So I'm going to pound the rest, and then we'll do, move on to the spice rub. So a lot of people buy, especially conventional chicken, is huge, right? It's bred to be really big. Actually, chickens now are about 60% bigger than chickens 70 years ago. And it's not because there's hormones. Hormones have been illegal in chickens since the 70s. It's because they're bred to be monsters because we like everything big in this country. And sometimes bigger is not better. The meat on those big chicken breasts is gummy and flavorless. Char Troyer in the house. Hey, Char from Michigan. The feeling is forever, Char. So You're I Michigan. would I would always, Char, where are you in Michigan? We're wondering. I would always go organic. If you can't, get something at least that is like um, certified humane. I know Purdue Harvest Land has, I think, organic and non-organic. Preferably organic, they have that at uh, Walmart. It's just so much better because when you get conventional chicken, what's the feed made of? Does anyone know what the feed is made of? Tell me in the comments. Also, organic chicken that's certified humane, they have a better life. They're not put into hen houses with 30,000 chickens eating their own poop. I mean, the quality of the chicken farming really, really matters. Exactly, Alexa. Burr, what, uh, Alexa's Burr, got it. Burr Oak, Michigan, close to the Ah. Indiana. Some would say that's Michiana. Michiana, John's got it. Uh, Arturo, you got it. It's not just corn and soy, it's GMO corn and soy. And a lot of people aren't sold about GMOs. I am sold and I'm drinking the Kool-Aid because here's the deal with GMO. It's by our good buddies, Monsanto, right? And so they, they breed and they raise the corn and the soy with Roundup in the seed. So when a bug or a worm eats the plant while it's growing, the bug dies. But they say it's 100% safe for us. Homie, don't play that game, right? So I just think life is too short to eat that kind of food, plus organic chicken tastes better. Just buy the organic chicken. It's not that much more expensive if you know where to buy it. Buy it from Costco. Um, it's just worth it. So all my chickens are now pounded thin. I mean, what do you guys, what do you guys think? Do you believe in avoiding GMOs? And the thing is, I really only believe in avoiding GMO corn and soy. They start sticking this non-GMO label on everything. That's purely for optics, right? They're paying for that sticker. And the thing is, when you get like avocado oil, here I'll show you. When you get avocado oil or like potato chips, it's always gonna be non-GMO. And the thing is, when you have something like an apple pear or an Asian pear, which is a breed between a pear and an apple, that's technically a GMO. It's a crossbreed, but it's a good GMO. And no one cares about that, right? So like it's very trendy now for companies to put this on their label. This is my uh, Costco avocado oil, non-GMO. Well, of course the avocado is GMO, non-GMO, right? It's not raised genetically modified. If it was a crossbreed, if it was like a Haas something else, then yeah, it's actually GMO, right? But it's not the GMO that has the Monsanto in there. So it's kind of like the marketers playing to our fears and maybe being able to charge a little more. So that's my thought on GMO. I'm gonna do a video about that. I'm the most common GMOs at the grocery store and what to stay away from. Is my free range Blu-ray player GMO free? Art and I do Drunk Uncle from, uh, from Saturday Night Live. It's so funny. So, hey, if you haven't done so yet, we got 551 people on the stream. We're about to get cracking on a keto butter basted chicken breast with blistered green beans and a salad that is to die for. Two things, number one, share. Sharing is caring, you guys. Take the link from this video, 
paste it to your Instagram story, your Facebook wall, you know, say, yo, Bobby from Flav City and Uncle Fartura are hanging out making some keto recipes from his cookbook. Number two, leave a comment down below. Let us know where you're watching from and what you're making for dinner. And like I said, both recipes are from the cookbook, which last week was a number one bestseller on Amazon for like five days straight. We lost the number one, but it's not a big deal. Amazon link down is below. Keep supporting the book. Keep telling people who are interested in losing weight, getting on the keto diet about the book. And I'll show you the pictures from the recipes later on. Okay, we got, how is Art related? He's my brother from another mother. We've been friends for over 20 years, believe it or not. Trader Joe is not owned by Aldi to whoever Correct. mentioned that. Okay, here's my spice rub. It is cayenne pepper. It is fennel. It is coriander. Smell that. Um, Kelly and Cody and Sabrina, smell that. You got some contaminants in there. Right, do I? Yeah, something red. Ah, it's probably just smoked paprika. What does that smell you know like, that. Sabrina? It's licorice -y, right? It smells like black licorice. I call fennel the Rodney Dangerfield of the culinary world. It gets no respect. No respect, I tell you. This stuff is delicious. It's an Italian uh, spice or herb. Fantastic flavor. So I'm going to put a whopping teaspoon and a half in there, followed by a teaspoon of coriander. Now, it's actually interesting. Smell this one, too. So... Uh, Gerardo or Christine or Anya, smell that. Coriander, coriander is the seed that cilantro grows from, but it's a completely different flavor. This actually has the flavor of burnt orange or burnt citrus, lovely flavor. And then a little bit of cayenne pepper. I'm gonna go less than normal because- What could you use instead of fennel if you wanted to replace the fennel? Great question. So I'm going for like an Italian vibe. So I would do equal parts onion powder, garlic powder, then coriander, then, and then uh, cayenne pepper. And Jenny, I'm, do, I'm doing Jenny less uh, cayenne than normal because I don't want spicy food for Desi for the breast milk. Jenny DeLeon is saying, uh, let's cook that chicken already. Oh my, OMG, she said that <laughs> twice now. Well, you're not going to be happy, Jenny, because we're going to marinate it and let it sit while we're cooking the green beans uh, next. So. And Fat, Fat J says, it smells like my monitor. Is that normal? <laughs> I, I guess technically, Joe, it is. But as soon as my patent pending smell of vision comes through. Not only will I be a billionaire, but you're all invited to my yacht and we'll go cruise uh, Monaco. Quick question, Bobby. Instead of soy sauce, have you tried Bragg's liquid aminos? I have and I don't like it. It's way too harsh of a flavor. It's so funny you mentioned that because I have an alternative. I'm going to show you in a little bit. So salt. Oh, Alaska in the house. Oh, nice. Hello, this Charlie. is one of the tips from my Number one video on YouTube and Google for how to cook chicken breast, be aggressive, be aggressive. Chicken breast is bland as can be. Add more salt than you think you need because it really brings out that chickeny flavor. Otherwise, it ain't gonna have no flavor. Then we take a little bit of the spice rub. We pat it over the top here. Pat, pat, pat. <laughs> and then ideally I would marinate this for about an hour at room temperature. But the thing is, we don't have that amount of time and I already kept this out for 45 minutes. And you might be like, oh my God, chicken sitting out for 45 minutes, isn't that contamination? You don't have to worry about that. If any germs did happen to breed, there's surface germs, and when I put it in a hot cast iron pan, we're gonna nuke those suckers into oblivion, right? Cold chicken in a hot pan is a mortal sin because you lower the temperature of the pan and you'll never get a crusty uh, crust on the chicken and wait until you see what the chicken looks like after it cooks and after we butter baste it. It is a game-changing recipe and technique for cooking chicken breast. Okay, what else is going on here, Art? What up, Nancy? Need to wash, it's only spreading germs to your sink. Good, good question. People who wash chicken, Art, tell people why they should never wash chicken or Thanksgiving turkeys. You're not doing yourself any good and you're Doing yourself a lot of bad. <laughs> <laughs> wow! That was a killer explanation, Art. <laughs> Why should they not so do it? You're probably washing the chicken thinking that you're going to uh, rinse off any bacteria. And yes. you're probably going to take some of it off and put it on something you don't want. And you're still going to have bacteria there. The only way to get rid of bacteria is to cook it. Right. And you're going to get splashing everywhere. And your lettuce is going to get covered Ugh. in bacteria. And Gross. Everything's going to get covered. That's gross. You're going to be covered in bacteria. So I'm going to push this to the side uh, over yonder and wash my hands. And also when you wash 
poultry and stuff. Yes, wash your hands. Look at this. It splashes all over your backsplash. It's, I mean, this is a close-up on washing my hands. Yes, true. Well, I, I started to, and then I started reading a comment that mentioned my name, and I realized I was uh, filming your hands. Well, I'm going to wash my hands for a good 15 seconds. I believe that is what Somebody the... Somebody uh, said Art needs some sugar. What's wrong with Art tonight? He needs some sugar. <laughs> Art didn't have his coffee fix at the grocery store like I did, because if you saw my Instagram story, today we filmed the coffee review video. We, we reviewed beans, ground, cold brew, decaf, instant coffee, coffee drinks, and creamers. You guys? Can we wash with turmeric and water? That's we did really everything. Good. It's gonna be an amazing video coming out Saturday. Nice. And we also filmed today the first ever Flav City podcast. Undecided on the name yet, but we're gonna think we're gonna call it um, Buy This, Not That with Flav City. We did it at none other than Costco. It's gonna be the same principle as YouTube. Shop with me, explaining why I buy things, why do I avoid, th why I avoid things, and why. And uh, it's just gonna be an audio form, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be a weekly podcast series, and I can't wait till that comes out. And I also decided with Art today that we're gonna start a fourth video on the channel every week of cooking. Let's get back to cooking besides the live stream. So we'll have a live stream cooking recipe, a real cooking video, and two videos on the weekend. Happy days. Big things are happening on Flav City, right? Four videos a week and a podcast. Are you excited like I am? Yes. Right? No, uh, Denise L., you don't need to wash blood off of red meat. Just get a paper towel and wipe it off. It's not really blood anyway. Yes, it's not blood. It's what, what is it basically? Water-soluble proteins. Well said. It's water-soluble proteins. Char asked... I'm not on a tripod. Where... Would someone who doesn't like licorice enjoy fennel? Yes. You would. Because, I mean... It's similar, but it's very different. Give it a try, Char. Trust me. Okay, next. That's going to marinate. I'm going to start preheating my cast iron pan because cast iron, nothing serious like it, but it is a little slower to conduct the heat. But once you get going, ooh, it's going to be so hot and it disperses that heat very evenly and it's going to brown our chicken so lovely. I'm preheating my nonstick pan for my blistered green beans. And this is a recipe from the cookbook. So if I open the book to actually the veggie chapter, there's, there's a whole veggie chapter called, said, mama eat your veggies. Oh, mama says eat your veggies. And this is the recipe. It's spice crusted, reverse seared cauliflower steaks with a minted yogurt sauce and blistered green beans with creamy mayonnaise sauce, onions, pecans, and it's delicious. Oh, mama said knock you out. <laughs> and here's the chicken part. In the book, it's paired with dairy-free cream spinach and a, look at that crust on there you guys so i'm just taking two recipes that i love and i'm mixing and matching it right you can do that with any recipe you want because every recipe is interchangeable and it's visual we have photos for every single recipe so you know what it's going to look like and like i said last week because of you with a live stream we were an amazon number one bestseller for the first time ever so let's keep that going you guys the amazon link is down below the holidays are coming up last week one of you guys ordered 40 books for the holidays i think it's going to blow up and i got confirmation raise the roof we're going to be in costco in november it's a trial run it's going to be about 1500 books placed in keto markets if it does well nationwide orders next it's going to be huge. When I find out what Costco's it's going to be at, I will spread the gospel because we so, got to sell it out. So Arlie has an interesting comment here. Yes. I'd like to hear meal planning, not just prep. Um, that's a good point. I should do that because prep is one thing, but planning is like all about shopping and creating different recipes. So tell me exactly what meal planning you want to see. And yeah. you super just chat? got a super chat from Char Troyer for $14.99 all the way from oh, Michigan. Michigan. Michiana. Michiana. Thank you. Yeah, Shar is an old school fan. She's been such a supporter of the channel. And Shar, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think did your dog pass away recently? I saw on Facebook. See, we're friends. Oh. I'm friends with everyone in the Flav City community. Sorry to um, hear that. It was a really cute dog she had for a long time. So these are Harry Colbert, which is French for green beans, which I did not know. I did a video a year ago. I'm like, what does Harry Colbert mean? And in the comments, they're like, you dumbass. It means green beans. <laughs> so. I like them because they're more tender and the ends are snipped off. To make blistered green beans, something Art and I did a lot uh, at the food festival last month and we're doing later on this month in Austin, Texas, you put it into a hot pan like that. A lot of people think of green beans and 
you think of boiled, steamed, overcooked green beans, and these are nothing like that. These are charred and exciting. So I put it in a pan with avocado oil, set over medium high heat, and I'm just gonna let them do their thing, right? They're gonna do their thing for about eight minutes and green they'll get blistered. Green beans doing their thing. And then at the end, I'm gonna throw in some onions, garlic, and cashews. Char Troyer's dog is just failing in health. Oh, okay, long. that's what it was. Thank you, Char. Char. Pepper. Thank Hope you. Come in for the skills so I'm gonna, here. that's right. We always do knife skills 101. Cutting an onion, perch your fingers on top. You cannot cut your finger unless you cut up like that, which would be bad. I'm making slices across like that. See, I can't get my finger. Then I bring my fingers back into a claw. I make sticks going down like this. Nikhil gives a 208 super chat. He's 208? Test, he's testing $2.08, testing super chat from Austin. Oh, Thank very so cool. Much. Hey, I hope you come to our meetup. I'm gonna announce a meetup in Austin this weekend. We're gonna do it on September 27th. I just gotta find a location. Does anyone know a good place in Austin? It could be the hotel we're staying at and then maybe we can do a field trip after that and get some food together. All depends how many people, but I'll announce it on the community tab and on Instagram. And I'll do an Eventbrite page for free tickets. Are green beans high in carbs for keto? Uh, oh, of course they're keto. They're in my keto cookbook, yeah. Somebody asked if they're high in carbs. No, they're not. Okay. They're keto compliant. You're being welcomed to lots of places in America other than Austin. Say again? You're being welcomed to other places You know in what? America and I want to go to all these Houston places. Houston wants you. San Diego, uh, Palm Harbor, Florida. I want to go to all those places. And Canada. once Rose gets a little older, we'll do it. Because now that we have Flav City family members everywhere, that's the key to traveling. When you have locals to show you around, it makes all the difference in the world. Back in the day, I used to travel with my buddies. And we didn't know anyone, and we had a good time because we were younger. But when Desi and I have gone on trips that we know people, it makes the trip so much better. I can't even tell you. All of America wants you now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I might take you up on that. You never know. Hey, Hawaii wants you. I well, think, that one sounds yeah. pretty good. What part of Hawaii? I don't know. In Alaska, too. I would go to Alaska, too. So Not in the... Let's go to Barrow, Alaska in February. That I want to. Okay, I want to. I'll go to Alaska in July. How does that sound? Yeah. So I'm getting ready, my vegetables ready for throwing in at the end because what would happen, you guys, if I put the onions and garlic in this blistering hot pan now? What would happen? And then I want some crunch in there. In the cookbook, I use pecans, but I have cashews right now. They're not 100% keto, but hey. Hey, Cars has a good question here. Mm. Why is heavy cream allowed for keto but not milk? Because milk has way more sugar. That's okay. why. Well, I thought it was a good question. Yeah. No, it's a great question. Okay. Milk is high in sugar. Like a, a cup of milk has like eight or so grams of sugar. Cream does not. Mm-hmm. Good question. Exactly. It's a five-second rule, Marianne. You know it. So when will you have signed cookbooks for sale? I, they just arrived right now. Um, I ordered some more from the publisher, so I think next week I will advertise that on Community and on Instagram Stories. The best way to follow that stuff, well, first, mark, first of all, you could bookmark uh, flavecity.com slash, I think it's signed cookbook? I'm not sure which one it is, but follow me on Instagram because when I announce it, they sell out pretty quick. And the thing is, we sign every copy ourselves. And then I have to, woo, mama. I have to, wow. I have to pack and ship all of them too. So I do about 25 to 50 at a time. All right, check it out. So this is what you want. See that blister right there? Blister in the sun. Now let me show you how, let me show you why I blister in the sun. That's huge flavor, like huge. So I'm gonna keep letting it do its thing. And the pan is so hot that if I added those things right now, those uh, oops, onions and garlic, it would burn. So meanwhile, I'm gonna get this guy ripping hot here and we'll cook that in avocado oil and finish it with butter, fresh thyme from the garden. Actually, my neighbor's garden, I don't have a garden. And um, garlic, a fantastic way to classically butter-based chicken that is dynamite. Somebody asked me to drink some milk and do a dance. Ha! Ah. I say nay nay. 
I'd like to see that too, but I don't see it happening. Somebody to be says, oh, Sherry says, isn't it burnt? No, 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 no. Absolutely not. Nope. The pan was a little hot, which is why I turned it down, but no. Keto Viviano says, I'll take you bourbon taste bourbon tasting here in Louisville, Kentucky. I would love to go on the bourbon trail. Oh my god. If I drink, I like a good glass of wine or a really good bourbon. And I would love to go on the bourbon trail. I think it'd be awesome. So I'm gonna put some avocado oil in my cast iron. And you want your pan to be pretty hot because chicken breast has essentially no fat, right? So Fast and Furious, Vin Diesel style is the way to go. Flip it, do another two minutes, lower the temperature, butter, garlic, uh, thyme, done. Does your neighbor ever question your herb thievery? No, because I ask. They gave me permission to use as much as I want. So, uh, Angela says violent femmes, blister in the sun. <laughs> uh, 733 people, we can do better. When are we gonna break the thousand mark? We guys, we got, six gonna happen we got 640,000 subscribers. Share the link over to our Instagram wall, Facebook wall, story, all that good stuff, and say, let's hang out. Let's make keto recipes with Bobby from Flav City and Uncle Farturo, right? And I'm pretty sure that I, do, I am going to do a wine haul. That rose is going to come out pretty soon. Oh, thank you, Genevieve, the husky and I. What kind of frying pan are you using? So this, so every week on Instagram stories, I do Bobby's favorite things, and I'm going to do all pots and pans this week. This is a 12 inch nonstick pan from Tramontina. They make really good affordable nonstick pans. And this is a beautiful, actually very expensive cast iron pan from Marquette uh, Casting in Michigan. It's like a $200 pan. But normally I use the large ones, a 12 inch or 13 inch large one for uh, $39. Everyone needs to have a cast iron pan. That's like classic Americana. Right, you have to have that in the kitchen. Nothing sears quite like it. Now, I want to make sure my oil's hot. If you put chicken into a cold pan, you won't get that sear. If you put cold chicken into a hot pan, you lower the temperature, you won't get that sear. So, I want to wait for that to heat up, and then I'm going to make the most easy fail safe salad dressing and salad ever. This is my favorite store bought salad, it's the Trader Joe's Cruise. Cruciferous, I used to call it Crunchiferous, for a year. I said Crunchiferous, and then finally I said it on Instagram stories. My DM blew up. They're like, Bobby, it's Cruciferous. Hooked on phonics. I think Did it not was actually on a live stream where we figured out. Was it a live stream? Yeah. Bebop Cowboy, $2 super chat. Thank you so much. And a question for yes. you. Ramen or pho? Ramen. I love ramen. I'm a big fan. Thank you for the super chat, by the way. Now, Art, come back here real quick. Pan looks pretty hot. I just want to make sure when I drop it, it is hot. So that's, you know what? That's pretty good. I'm going to not overcrowd the pan. That's one of the tricks to making really good chicken. I'm going to put three in here. And you might think, well, Bobby, you can probably get another one in there. I have two more in here. Why bother crowding it when I have to do another batch anyway? So once chicken goes in, let it do its thing, and Art is going to tell you why you don't want to poke it and why you don't want to prod it. What did it ever do to you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Enough Emerald. Said. Thank you, Emerald, <laughs> for that one. You want to explain? Amen to that one, Leslie. Uh, you don't want to poke it because you're going to let the juices out of the chicken. Yes. Well, another reason. Well, well, I, I wasn't listening, really. Well. Tell people why you don't want to be peeking and flipping oh, the chicken. Oh, yeah, you, you need to give it some time to do its thing there. It's not going to get nice and uh, caramelized if you, uh, exactly. if you keep peeking. Exactly. A lot of people have anxiety when cooking stuff like that. And the same is true with barbecuing or grilling. Leave it alone for four minutes. Back do away. not even peek before that. Back away. Just back, back walk away. We think of Alton Brown. Just walk away. Walk away. Because as soon as you pick it up, you break the contact with the hot uh, cast iron and you're gonna ruin the sear, trust me. Meanwhile, these are looking pretty good, you guys. Check it out. Laura Munson made this chicken on Sunday and it was amazing. Ooh, I love to hear that. So they're getting blistered. Yeah, I mean, a couple of things got a little charred, but it doesn't matter. The pan was too high. It don't matter, my friend. So now I'm gonna take my onions, garlic, and cashews, turn the heat down just a little bit, and then I want it to keep cooking as like a stir fry. And then I'll add some liquid to this and I'll 
break the fry and steam them through. And notice how I haven't added any salt yet. Can someone tell me why I haven't added salt to a blistered green bean recipe? I know there's plenty of people out there who know that answer, but I want to see who knows it. Olivia, your rusted cast iron can be saved. Just look it up. There's plenty of yes. tutorials out there. It can be recovered. It can be saved. It's a little bit of work, but you can do it. You can do it. You can do it, water boy. <laughs> um, so let me just throw the salad in here. So this is my go-to lunch salad. I do it on Instagram a lot, and it's a dressing that is such a hodgepodge, and it's so easy that it's almost silly. Somebody questioned if that salad was organic. It's actually not. That's unfortunate. They don't have the organic version of this, which is a bummer, but sometimes what are you gonna do? I just love the crunch of this, so, you know, sometimes you gotta cut corners. And what I do is I rough it up a little bit, because the cabbage and the Brussels and the kale are very, very hearty. And here's the beauty of the salad, you guys. The dressing is literally consisting of avocado oil mayonnaise, lemon juice, salt, pepper, extra virgin olive oil, and apple cider vinegar. Raw apple cider vinegar with the mother. Mother, can you see mother art? Mama. <laughs> is mother home? There she is. What's the beauty of that? It has a living probiotic bacteria, which is good for your tum-tum. I don't even mix it. I don't even make a, a vinaigrette or an emulsion. I dump each one in here. I stir it up. The flavor is creamy and acidic, and it looks like a store-bought and tastes like a store-bought dressing, but it's a hodgepodge. You're gonna love when I mix that up, but we can add some more crunch to that. And I know it's not keto, but we have some raisins here. I buy organic raisins. Sarah Gall with a $2 super Oh, chat. Sarah. Salt substitute is potassium chloride. Bobby approved? Um, the thing is, if it's pure potassium chloride, I'm, I'm okay with that. But sometimes they put other fillers in there. I would almost say, Sarah, that use less salt and then finish your recipes with this. <laughs> I'm dropping. Keep them score at home. That's the seventh thing he's dropped. I'm dropping everything today. Drop it with, or finish it with, acid, lemon juice. Don't drop it. I'll catch it. Apple cider vinegar. Anything. Acid is a great replacement to salt, and it heightens the flavor of things at the end. So imagine like, well, this I'm not using any much salt because I'm using uh, coconut aminos. But if you wanted to do less salt on the chicken at the end, squeeze over lemon juice, and it wakes up the flavor, and it kind of does like. A salt head fake. Okay, chicken is but Notice how I'm using the splatter screen because look, the oil is kind of bubbling everywhere and you want to have an easy cleanup. Now, these are pretty much done. See what happened? They gently cook through here. Somebody also wants to know what you're drinking. Uh, I am drinking S. I thought it was called S.A., but I talked about these guys in the water review video and they saw it and they sent me a whole case. It's one of the only flavored waters that has no natural flavor. It's actually really good. And then I also am drinking some collagen water too. So I need my collagen. So this is done. And what I want to do is not mix up my tongs here. This is for the chicken. So now we can look at the uh, crust. Art, right, take a look. You guys, how beautiful is the crust on that? This is why I have the number one video on the internet, pretty much, for how to cook chicken breast. Most people tend to overcook their chicken. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do this. I like this burner better, so... Yanni Johnson, it's Vital Proteins brand. Coloring yes, water. it's delicious. So I'm going to turn the heat down to medium-low. i got to work quick here because I don't want to overcook it. I'm going to grab some Kerrygold butter here. Do you have enough? I have... I bought a lot of Costco today. So here's what I do really quick, you guys. I'm going to cut a huge knob of grass-fed butter. Oh, come on. <laughs> the whole thing in there, dude. Not the whole thing. Here. Art's making me feel like a chump. So that goes in. We add some fresh thyme from the neighbor's garden. And then we add three cloves of smashed garlic. Let me smash it real quick. Check it out, Art. I go whack. I go whack. I go whack. And the reason why I'm working fast is I don't want to overcook the chicken. And also because 
I don't want to burn the butter. Notice how I turned the temperature pretty much down to low. That is because, my friends, brown butter is good. Black butter is bad, right? So, what I'm going to do, swirl it around. Burn <laughs> off, but it goes burnt. Yeah, exactly. So this is what you do. This is what they pretty much do in many restaurants. This is why restaurant food tastes good. They butter based. The only difference between my kitchen and restaurant kitchens is they use low quality, not grass fed butter, in my opinion. And they use ref refined bleached salt. And I use unrefined sea salt. So that's why I have a hard time going out because even if you're getting chicken that's organic, they're not using good quality oil and they're not using good quality salt. I am that picky, believe it or not. Okay, but see how it's gently cooking now? And then we got to multitask. I need, when are you guys going to come over and help me? Now to stop the cooking process or to steam the green beans through, someone asked me about co uh, aminos from Bragg's. This brand of coconut aminos has a great umame flavor. It's expensive, it's $7, but they sent it to me in the mail and it's really good. So and you put some sriracha? I did, actually, I know they don't do that, but I saw it and I did it by mistake. <laughs> so it's okay, but what happens is you break the fry and now you just kinda, whoa, get over here. You kinda just steam them through. It's like Mortal Kombat. Get over here. And they're done. And you know what? Normally I add, I make an insane sauce. I feel like you can just add mayonnaise to that and that would be bomb as is. But I've only seen this at Whole Foods. Expensive, but normally coconut aminos are too sweet for me. This actually has that umami flavor. So if you do not like tamari, move your finger. Then you can get this one. Garlic sauce. Yeah, they make a teriyaki one too. But I love tamari sauce because it has that umami. But if you don't want to eat soy, get that kind of amino because the aminos from like uh, Trader Joe's, the coconut aminos, are way too uh, sweet for me. They don't have that salty flavor that I love. So guys, this is how to cook chicken breast, right? How do I know if it's done? Just push it like that. See, I can just feel it's done, but you can also use a probe thermometer. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take them off the heat. I'm smelling that sriracha. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I didn't mean to put it in there. I just saw the bottle and I just grabbed it. $1.99 from Ceci. Do you, uh, do you take apple cider vinegar? How do you dilute it? Um, I don't drink that actually, but if you put a teaspoon in eight ounces of water, it's a really nice way to start the day. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave everything in the pan. I'm gonna turn the heat back up to medium high and we'll cook the rest of the chicken. In the meantime, I'm going to cover my chicken with aluminum foil. Aluminum and just keep them warm. This is about all I use aluminum for. I don't put it in the oven because I'm a weird guy and I think the, the foil reacts with the food and I'm scared of doing that, but I like to actually keep food warm that way. Alonzo Valencia asked, do you ever use ghee? Do I, I, I laugh because- you, this Are you joking? This must be your first live stream. This is like one of the few times he doesn't use ghee. I almost always. Good question. Use ghee. Oh, by the way, we need a little bit of salt in there. See, I held up on the salt to the end because salt pulls out moisture and I want the, I wanted the green beans to get almost caramelized and blackened. There's a ton of flavor. Mm. And the sriracha, <clears throat> it's sneaking up on the back of my throat. I'm not sure Desi can eat that one. But speaking of sriracha, <coughs> <coughs> speaking of sriracha, I no longer use the brand with the rooster on there. All right, check it out. This is the brand you want to buy, and they have it at Walmart. <clears throat> and the reason why I recommend that one is because it's all natural. The other one has a few too many preservatives in there. This has no preservatives. It's super duper clean, and I love it. Okay, so we put this one down here. And then we might as well cook the tenders. This will be my lunch for tomorrow. So now we have the benefit, what well, should be interesting? We have the benefit of cooking in the butter, but Art, I put the heat back up on this thing. Do you think there's a chance we're gonna burn that butter now? Ooh, there is a chance. I think there is a good chance, yeah. but we're gonna find out. I'm not gonna pour the butter off, it's too much work. Okay, 
Now, let's just finish this salad. Maggie B, guys, I made it. Hi, Bobby. Hi, Uncle Farturo. <laughs> Is she the one who invented that? Maggie, were you the one that started Uncle Farturo? I think it's you or there's another person. I haven't seen anyone take credit for it on this call yet. This call. <laughs> this video. Yeah, Rachel Ray always uses the rooster one. Uh, most people do. Hey, you can't stop them. I just put the information out there. I was on Rachel Ray's show January of last year. I don't know if you saw it. If you Google Flav City Rachel Ray on YouTube, you'll see it. We had a great time. I made meal prep recipes with her. I thought for sure they would invite me back. Crickets. I ain't heard nothing from my girl, Rachel. That's, that's no respect, Rachel. Maggie B is the inventor of Uncle Farturo. So oh, that, thank you, Maggie. I've been using that all week the long. Has stuck. And you just got a $5 super Wow. Salad. And let me go back to the question. Candace V, did you use salted or unsalted butter for the chicken, or does it matter? It doesn't matter. I used unsalted, but today I went to Costco and I got eight sticks or eight packs of salted butter because that's all they have. But it's such a minimal, minimal amount of salt, my girl, that it doesn't matter. All right, maybe for baking, it might matter a little more. I would use unsalted. You're storing them in your, free, in your freezer, right? Yeah, I store them all in my freezer, and I keep one in my fridge at all times. I noticed, by the way, the price of Kerrygold at Walmart went up ever since Aldi stopped carrying it. It went up from like $2.88 to $3.50 and change. But if you buy it at Costco, it's still like, uh, comes out to two fifty a brick. So if you didn't hear earlier, very exciting happenings here in Flav City. We're starting a podcast. Who's excited about that? It's going to be a weekly series called Buy This, Not That. It's going to be an extension of the YouTube channel. Art and I go to the grocery store and we record audio of us shopping in aisles, telling you what to buy, what to avoid, and why. We did the inaugural one, the first one today at Costco. It was a blast. We're gonna get a few more done before we start releasing them. And I decided this week that I'm gonna add a new video to the channel every week, going back to cooking. So we're gonna do two cooking videos every week, a live stream and a video, and two videos from the grocery store every weekend for a combined total of four videos a week. Holler if you're happy because I'm stoked, you guys, I'm stoked. You just got a $1.99 super chat from Land and Sky Adventures Plus, and I know you have a name there, but it doesn't show up here, so thank you. Thank you for that. Does anyone have a better name? Uh, I think buy this, not that, sounds really good, but if you have a better name for your podcast, let us know. This is the water. They ha they're supposed to have it at Costco, but I didn't see it. I thought Costco had a variety pack. It might have been just for the summer, but it's one scoop of grass-fed collagen peptides, which also has 10 grams of protein, this stuff is one of the best flavored waters on the market. It's pricey though. It's $4 a bottle if you buy it at Whole Foods. A little cheaper at Costco. Kathy Beasley, $1.99 super chat. Kathy, you're the girl. So Thank much. you. Thank you, Kathy. These are looking good. Okay, so here are, right. here's another way to know when your chicken breasts are getting ready to flip. So they almost tell you. Look around the edges. See how it's white and opaque there? When it starts to creep up around the side, that means it's ready. So I know the small ones are done because they don't take much time. So let's flip those. And then for this, uh, this peak, I think it needs another minute. I think so too. Right? It needs another minute. Is that shirt from Bad Pickle Tea? It is. Bad Pickle Tea? Yes, it is. Bad Pickle All my shirts are from Bad Pickle Tea. I have a few from back in the day from Flavor Gallery. Flavor with a U. Um, but... It's uh, a great company. It's a husband and wife in California. So in insane. Boy, $2 super chat. The more videos, the better. You guys rock. Hashtag flavor family. Yeah, so keep in mind, right? Some big YouTubers have a team. It is literally just art and I. So if it were up to me, if I had the resources, I would have a team of three or four people who did post-production, editing, social media. I do all that stuff. So art does all my filming. He helps, uh, big, he comes over twice a week and we work all day long. But the other days, you guys, I'm working on social media. I'm programming videos. I'm finishing the edit on the videos. I have a guy who does my video. His name is Chris. He's amazing. Then I have to work on the blog and recipes. And then I have to work on the new ebook. I wish I had a team. Because then if I could only focus on creating videos, I would do five videos a week and we would crush it. But baby steps, right? Just like Bob Cobb from the movie What About Bob? Baby steps out the door. Baby steps down the elevator. Baby steps to the kitchen. It's all about baby steps. I'm sailing! I'm sailing! <laughs> I'm sailing! That's the only line I know from that movie. <laughs> so let's make the insane sauce really quick. 
It's a scoop of avocado oil mayonnaise. It's a little bit of lemon juice. All right. It's a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm gonna use the fine sea salt because look, it's gonna dissolve easier. This is the kosher, which I use for cooking. The fine is what I use for dressings and for finishing. Then I'll crack in some pepper. Candice me, $2 super chat, love the biscuit recipe. Oh, that's a good one from the cookbook. I do too, and I think you should have made them today. Kim Ward, $1.99 <laughs> super chat. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Little bit of coconut aminos or tamari, little bit more of toasted sesame oil, and that's it. We'll whisk that up. In the meantime, let's flip the chicken. Jadiner27, I like the all thriller, no filler for the podcast name. Oh, that's, that's a pretty cool name too, I like that. So I'm gonna let that cook for one minute, minute more and then I'll start basting it with butter. I like that name, but it doesn't tell what it is because I also want to appeal to people who don't know about Flav City. So I think when you say something like, buy this, not that, and this week's episode is from Costco, or Trader Joe's, the bread aisle, the cheese aisle, that's catchy. But yeah, you guys uh, let me know. How about two blokes loiter in the granola aisle? <laughs> we didn't loiter. That's the beauty of the podcast is that we can get it done. You guys, we were at Whole Foods today, and this is our life for four hours filming the cooking, uh, the coffee review video. Why? Well, the video doesn't take that long. We could have been in and out in 30 minutes. The problem is we're not allowed to film at the grocery store. And every time an employee or a Waldo is close by, we gotta stop filming. And if they happen to be restocking the stuff in that aisle, we gotta wait. So there's so much waiting around, but it's worth it because the content is so informative and you guys love it. Here's the name, Waldo Dodgers. <laughs> That funny. All right, so there's our dressing. Ooh, Maggie B says, Flav City approved for the podcast name. You know what? I like that too. So the name of the ebook shopping guide, which in case you missed it, we're doing, putting the finishing touches on an ebook shopping guide called Bobby Approved, your ultimate grocery list for the, or ultimate list for the grocery store. And it's going to be every piece of information from the videos we've done plus more. That's where I have the Bobby approved in there. That'll be an ebook available on Kindle. Liz K says it should be called Flave City's Card It or Part It. Say it again? Card It. Flave City's oh my Card God. It or Part It. That's interesting. I like that. And Debbie Bilarakis, $5 Super Chat, Chicago Rocks. Thanks, Bobby and fam, for your keto recipes. Thank and you, Deb. All into a cook cook Deb. Cookbooks for Christmas. Oh, how many? I guess she's planning on getting Oh, thanks, Deb. Christmas. Yeah, I have a really good feeling about the Christmas season. I think this book is going to be a barn burner because people are just going to want to start doing keto. And even if you don't do keto, you're going to want to start losing weight. And this is the ultimate cookbook for losing weight without sacrificing flavor. Dirt Road Dini says, eating clean, but the flavor is mean. <laughs> I like that. So Art, let's get some close-up butter basting action. This is the, uh, the food porn moment. So this recipe is in the cookbook. It's paired with uh, dairy-free cream spinach. And the green beans are in the cookbook paired with uh, cauliflower steaks. But that's the beauty of the cookbook. You can mix and match any recipe you want. And most of all, you guys, it's feel-good food that tastes good. No one's going to buy this cookbook and be like, oh, man, the recipes are kind of bland. I didn't realize keto was so boring. These recipes are so creative, you don't feel like you're on a diet. You just feel like you're eating tasty food, and it happens to be really good for you. You'll shed pounds, you'll get off that diabetes medication, all that good stuff. So once again, the Amazon link is down below in the description box. Let's get that back to a number one bestseller on Amazon. When I saw that last week, I was like, wow, this is so cool. And if you live international, it ships everywhere. Don't use my link, just search Flav City on your local Amazon browser. It ships all over the world. I'm liking Bebop Cowboy's suggestion for the podcast name. This is having a little bit of a... Uh... Christopher Walken and a music video theme to it. Okay. You can play with this or you can play with that. <laughs> That's pretty good, dude. Yeah, me, $2 super chat. Buy Thank you. Books, buying more books for friends. Oh, you're so sweet. Who's that? Candace V. Candace. With a super chat. Thank you, Candace. You're so supportive, you guys. We have such a supportive channel. Everything we do is so supportive. And you know what? I got like literally two emails, which is not that much, but two emails recently saying, hey, Bobby, I subscribed to your channel because of your recipes. And now you're really only doing cooking, uh, cooking live streams that take an hour and you're doing videos from the grocery store and I miss your cooking videos. And that, that email kind of resonated with me 
because I love cooking with you too and I realize not everyone can hang out for an hour, which is why I decided this week that, hey, we gotta go back and start making recipes once a week. They're not gonna be like elaborate meal prep recipes, but they're gonna be really good, tasty recipes like um, I wanna share with you my keto shrimp and grits recipe. So then, then we have something for everyone. We have a cooking video, a live stream cooking video, and two shopping videos for the weekend. A couple questions. Yes. People are asking, when's the book gonna be in Costco? Did you say November? Yeah, so the book's gonna be in Costco on a limited run. When I find out which Costco's, I'll let you know. And what Costco told the publisher is, if it does well in the run, they're gonna order nationwide. So when I tell you where it's at, if you can support the book and help sell it out, that's gonna be huge. Um, Walmart is close to placing an order for the holidays, I heard too, but I want that Costco order so bad because um, every time I walk by there, I see the keto cookbooks and it breaks my heart not to see ours in there too. And somebody else just asked about the ebook. When's that coming? Well, I'm trying to put the final touches on it. I would say in the next two weeks. Uh, Art and I have been working on it, but then I get, I get sidetracked because all the data is there now, but we're creating graphs and charts to make it very user friendly. And then Every time I make a new video, I'm like, oh no, I gotta take that data now and import it. So I just gotta dedicate like one full day and just get her done. Um, oh, by the way, also, if you live in Chicagoland, this weekend, all day Saturday and Sunday, I'll be at the East Lakeview Festival of the Arts um, doing cooking demos and hanging out. So just Google East Lakeview Art Festival. I'll be there all day. Uh, we can hang out, have a good time. I'll be making some keto recipes. I would love to see you guys. It's gonna be fun. So this is done. We have a little leftover. Should we do a gratuitous butter shot here, Art? Oh, yeah, why not? Okay, so I gotta put something on so I don't burn my hand. Let's do it over here, Ardeal. Oh. Okay. Are you guys cool with a little uh, hot butter action? Who isn't? <laughs> butter on chicken action. Let me get the other glove. So this is something you guys need to get. It's an oven glove, safe up to 800 degrees, but most importantly, it protects your wrists. Last holiday season, I had burn marks like crazy. Not anymore. This is such a great invention. You can't hold something too long, but it's pretty much safe for up to like 10 seconds of holding. So ready, Art? Yeah. The butter, you know, it didn't burn. I can't believe it, but look at that. Oh my God, it's crackling. It's crackling over the chicken. Oh yeah, babe. That's, that's hot. All right, that's hot. Let me get a cooking demo on the Today Show. Let's put that out there in the universe. I agree. Well, you know what happened? After the book came out and it started doing so well, over 550 five-star reviews so well, I started messaging and tagging Al Roker, and then I asked all my fans to also. I'm like, yo, Al, let's make keto recipes from the cookbook. I heard nothing back from him. I'm like, dude, you're on the keto diet. You preach it, and I have like one of the top-selling books on Amazon, and you don't want to have me on? Very, very strange. You know what, that business, you guys, TV, which I'm not too thrilled about, is all about who you know, not what you know. And I know a lot, I don't really know that many people. And that's why, like, I don't even like the TV industry anymore. I thought no. it'd be cool to like, get discovered and do that. YouTube and the internet's where it's at. I'm getting Whoa. bottled up here Whoa. in terms of calling out the super chats here. Jody Ballard, $10, Sarah, $5, I'm getting your cookbook for Christmas. I've lost 24 pounds so far with keto. Love your cauliflower tots. Can't wait to try more recipes. Awesome. Thank you, Jody. Thank you, Sarah. Yes, guys. Thank you so much. It's funny. We saw cauliflower tots at the uh, Costco today, and we talked about it in our podcast. The problem is they're not keto. They have a ton of starch in them. And um, there is a store. Does anyone know where it is who sells low-carb cauliflower tots? Is it Aldi? Someone just sent it to me this week on Instagram. I love when you guys send me pictures of what the stores have. It's so cool. All right, so let me put this chicken aside. This is how you want to store chicken. You can't eat it hot from the pan because the juices inside are really hot. And if you cut into hot chicken, the juices run everywhere. It gets dry as can be. So it gives you some time. All right, let's come over here and finish this salad. By the way, part of our coffee review video today was coffee drinks. This is best in class coffee drink in the grocery store. It's Rebel. It's low carb because they use stevia. And this one has 12 grams of pea protein powder. Look at these ingredients, you guys. I've never seen ingredients like this in a coffee drink. And they also put superfood mushrooms. Look, ashwagandha, maca, stevia. Look at that. You kidding me? Four grams of sugar, 
amazing. This tastes so good. Then I saw a Dunkin' Donuts one that had 39 grams of sugar and a Starbucks Frappuccino that had a whopping 41 grams of sugar. 41 grams of sugar is 10 teaspoons of white sugar. That is not a coffee drink at that point. It is liquid diabetes. That's what it is, okay? Uh, the names for the podcast continue to come oh, up. Oh, tell me, please tell me. Unlikely Critic says, how about Don't Worry, Eat Happy? <laughs> I like that. The thing is, it's not an eating podcast. It's more of a... Uh, shopping one, but I like the way you think. I like the way you think. Oh, boo doo boo. <laughs> the third set of tongs is out. So I wait for the green beans to cool down just a little bit because if you toss it with hot beans, you break the mayonnaise, you split the fat. But look at that, you guys. This is why I call it insane green beans because the flavors and textures are literally insane. This is like beyond insane because this is sriracha mayo. Yeah, it's true. It's, uh, what's, what's beyond insane? Uh, hysterical? Something like that. But if you have picky eaters in the house, I get messages all the time that my recipes ludicrous. are picky. <laughs> Lud ludicrous. Sauce. That's, that's ludicrous sauce. Oh my God. I need a high five, dude. That's cool. <laughs> I get messages all the time that people's kids love my recipes. Their picky husbands love it. All my recipes in the book and online are picky eater approved. If you think you don't like green beans, if you think you don't like cauliflower or broccoli, try the way I make them. Changes your vision of, of uh, vegetables. It's crazy. So you guys, chicken's done. That's done. Once again, we have my favorite Trader Joe's uh, cruciferous crunch salad in here. A little bit of walnuts, a little bit of raisins. And this is my go-to salad dressing for lunch. What's so funny, Eric? Maggie B heard me wrong. She thought I said it's Beyonce insane. Oh, no, no, no. It's not, it's not Queen, it's, it's not Queen B insane. No, no, no. It's Luda. So a little bit. So I have this recipe online. It's part of the Aldi food stamp video. Candice V again, $5 super chat. Candice! Would there be a way to make the biscuit recipe sweet to use with strawberries? Yep, so a lot of people are doing that, Candice. Add strawberries, add either um, monk fruit sweetener or some powdered stevia, done. Leave, I prefer- leave, uh, leave out the chives, right? Yeah, leave out the chives, leave out the cheddar. Actually, cheddar and strawberry goes together really well, if you want. Um, and then add, I'd say, a tablespoon or two of monk fruit, uh, monk fruit sweetener, which they have at Costco's now all over the nation, and you'll be good to go. Sabrina says today is Ludacris's birthday. Shut up, are you serious? That's hilarious. <laughs> and CK keeps saying his doctor told him that the keto diet leads to high cholesterol and people with hereditary heart problems should not follow it. What are your thoughts? I would say yes, if you're, your doctor. Yeah, if you have a history of high cholesterol, I would not do the super high fat Keto, that's what's unique about my recipes. I don't quite believe in very high fat keto. My book focuses on low carb, moderate fat. I'm not a whole big fan of like fat bombs and stuff like that. Very moderate fat for me and very high quality, clean keto recipes. Not all fats are created equally. Not all ingredients are created equally. I use the best quality fats and ingredients and focus on lower carb. Margie is wondering if keto is okay for people with fatty liver disease, fatty liver. That I don't know, Marge. I would ask a doctor. Let me look into that. But once again, I think if you do the moderate fat one, it's fine. I just don't like these keto diets that go crazy high in fat. Plus, I focus on grass-fed beef fat. I focus on avocado fat, extra virgin uh, coconut oil fat. I don't eat anything that is processed, like canola oil, corn oil, sunflower oil, safflower oil. Um, veggie oil, we don't use any of that in our cookbook or our recipes, that stuff is toxic. So Jesse Brummett, $2 Super Chat, can you do grocery hauls at Amazon and Thrive? Yes, I'm definitely gonna do that. And I won't get kicked out of those for sure. And then Prashanth Gori Parthi, so $9.99 Super Chat. Wow. Would love to see a bit more kid slash picky eater friendly recipes. And Art, I can't wait to hear <laughs> you say my name, LOL. So Say it again. Let me back up. It, because I can't pronounce that. Prashanth Goriparthi. Wow, it sounds right. Prashanth, we're definitely going to do kid-friendly recipes, especially since Rose will be eating in another maybe like three to six months. I'm going to so, give this Prashanth, not Prashanth. So guys, this, this is my go-to salad dressing. Look, Art, I mix it up like this. It's avocado oil, mayonnaise, salt, pepper, apple cider vinegar, and extra virgin olive oil. And once you mix it up, it looks like a creamy ranch or a creamy like blue cheese. And if you think it looks dry, you add more mayonnaise, 
and you taste it and you want it to be slightly acidic to cut through the richness of the dinner, but no one's gonna know you literally just dumped everything in the bowl and mixed it together. Fail safe. Every time, I adore, I adore that recipe. Je adore recipe. Bonjour. <laughs> Bonjour, je adore. All right, that's it you guys. We just made dinner an hour, but you can go a lot quicker if you're not goofing on hanging out with your family. By the way, got 846 people here. We're gonna plate up the dish. This is your last time to share it over to Facebook and Instagram story to see the final keto masterpiece. Podcast uh, name suggestion, Flav Shopping with the City Boys. <laughs> is Art the City Boy? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> I like that. So, here's what I wanna do. I wanna plate up a little bit of salad. Where's my clean tongs? Here, here. So just put that down. It's crunchy, you guys, because that cruciferous. Crunchiferous. Yeah, the crunchiferous is crunchy, but then I added walnuts. A little bit of sweetness from the raisins. Not keto, but I love it. It's paleo. Healthy buys with two guys at the grocery store. Oh my God, that's funny, dude. That is funny. I like that. Somebody says, Injection of Flavor podcast. Whoa. Injection of Flavor? Yeah. <laughs> I like that. A little bit of green beans. Guys, look at the insane green beans. I mean, shut the front door, right? Ludicrous beans. Yeah, I'm sorry, Ludo. These are the Ludo. And then I want some extra crunch of farious on top, so I put the cashews. These are a little spicier than normal because I put that sriracha in there by mistake. And now, so now it gets interesting. The star. The, the star of the show. The piece de resistance, the poulet. The poulet is cooked in the, the beurre, the beurre and the thyme. And it is basted until it is ready. Your French audience is going to drop off real soon. <laughs> you know what? We don't, do we have any people from France watching? I've never heard anyone know. say if they're from France. If anybody here is from France, please opine right now. I don't think know. anyone's from France watching our videos, to Bonjour. be honest. If it, if Maybe in France they're disgusted by me. So here's what we do, you guys. Let's take one of the chicken breasts here. right? And then here's how I want to show you how it's so juicy and why I have the number one chicken breast video on YouTube and the number one chicken Ooh. search on Google. Because you probably have never quite had a chicken breast. Look at this. Mm. Look at the juice, you guys. And it's still you hot. Like, you like it, the juice? Uh, you like it, the juice? I like it, the juice. For the kill here. First of all, I rested this for 10 minutes and it did not get cold. There's steam coming out of here. Push it's, on it again. Right, watch this for you guys. Oh, ho, 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 right? Super, super juicy. And then if I just want to make sure it tastes really good, I'm just going to cut a piece here. Looking at an excuse to eat. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, guys, that's silly. All right, so I'll put it right here. It's 1.30 a.m. in France. Yep, that's why I would say bonjour if anyone's on, but mm -hmm. technically it's morning. Right. No, I don't like that plating. Let's do this. Like that, and then... I think we need a little bit of greenery. Guys, the chicken, I mean, you just try it, right? Try the recipe from the cookbook or even just go online and search Flav City chicken breast. It's a game changer. You have a French ami here. I do? Uh, Mon ami? Cecile V says hello from France. Oh! Weirdos, LOL. Cecile, mon ami Cecile, you are up. You are so kind to stay up so late. Trejule, Cecile, trejule. Merci beaucoup. A little bit of parsley to Hilda's, make Hilda happy. Hilda's really happy now. But I'm telling you guys, the flavor and texture of that chicken, because we cooked it perfectly and we have organic chicken, I believe it will change your life when it comes to chicken. Nancy, the great question, could you cook chicken thighs the same way? The same exact way. Exact way. Now, when, I'm not done, Art, because look in the bottom of that plate. Do you see what I see? I see potential there. There's literally a pool of grass-fed butter here. So I'm just gonna scoop some. swimming in it, man. It's swimming. I, I wouldn't mind swimming in that pool. A little bit of butter. It's, it's a baked-in sauce, you guys. It has its own sauce. I mean, how many times do you cook food that has its own sauce? You can always count on Maggie B to be the first one to suggest I get in there and eat. <laughs> first, Bobby gets to get a, a full bite, and then Art Eventually comes in. With the hashtag feed art. And then, 
Should we see if Rose is up? Do you guys want to see people, Rose Honey? People earlier asked to see Princess, okay. Princess Prin Keto. She is. Oh my God. Did they say that? That's what somebody said. That's fun. She is Princess Keto. I don't remember who, but you're welcome. Good she, well, she's actually not on a keto diet because Desi's eating more of a starchy diet now for breast milk production. Yeah, but your name is associated with sure. keto. So. But, oh God. You guys, she turned three last Friday. The second she turned three, she's been sleeping eight hours a night. Praise Jesus. She's so cute. Oh, we love her so much. Hashtag feed art. They're rolling in now. <laughs> it's trendy. All right, hold on. Let me just do a proper bite. Go I got, the way my knife cuts through this, like butter. I was going to say, it's like a hot knife through butter. It's not because, rubbery. Because there is a lot of hot butter in there. <laughs> it's not rubbery at all. So now I want the ultimate bite. I want that and that. Look at this, you guys. Who doesn't want to eat this for dinner? This is feel-good food. And you don't have to feel guilty about it because it's 100% healthy. Mmm. Wow, Cecile says you speak French so well. Moi? Ah, oh, merci beaucoup. Je m'appelle Robert. Oh my God. You guys, I'm sorry. That is silly. It's silly how good it is. The flavors are popping. And when you eat everything together, it's actually really nice because the little spice from the green beans cuts through the richness and the butteriness of the chicken and the salad. We do a high five on three. One, two, three. Thank you guys. That is so good. All right. It is time for Uncle Fartura to get in here. I thought Rose wants to come out here, right? Let's let Uncle Fartura uh, dig in real quick. Rhonda asks, Art, could you chop and freeze some avocado chunks and make an ice cream in the Cuisinart? Wow. You're Interesting gonna thought. Ice, you're going to need an ice cream machine at some point in the process. Well, she's thinking of banana ice cream. So you can make banana ice cream in the freezer with frozen bananas and coconut cream. Oh. And I think you could do that, the same thing with um, avocados. Okay. And you can actually buy frozen avocado chunks at Aldi or Costco, but that's a very, very smart idea. So Art, your fork is right here. Which one? This one. Okay. And we can, you can use the same knife. I haven't soiled that one. Okay. Everyone, say hello to the man, Art Almacy, wearing a very appropriate shirt for 9-11 today, because Art evening, is everybody. a patriot. Ah, oh, merci beaucoup, talk. Priscilla. I want to eat. You don't have to store ACV in the fridge, no. Yeah, sorry, I didn't get to that question earlier. <laughs> Too many questions to, I don't want to interrupt you all the time. Thank you, Art. That's why Art's a patriot. Hi, That's Art. Good. Hello. Isn't it weird to see Art not wearing a uh, cup shirt? Mm. Is Art Rose's uncle? Well, kind of. A Frunkle. Yes, he's a Frunkle, but he's out. We also call him, his official name is Uncle Farturo. And Rose's uh, nickname is um, the Duchess of Poopington because she poops all day long. <laughs> I use this mayo here. It's actually on sale right now at Whole Foods for a great price. Just as good as uh, Primal Kitchen. Art, we I, need your yeah, detailed. <laughs> we need your detailed description of the flavors. Now, see, you got these spices, right? The spice is right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Art. <laughs> the fennel, the fennel is really cutting through there, mm. and uh, that's probably more detail than I've ever said. On <laughs> the fennel is really cutting in there. That's awesome. It's good. <laughs> so good, you'll drop a bean. Hey, Des, do you want to bring Rose out here? This is it. Chosen foods. It's the same ingredients as um, Primal Kitchen, pretty much. As clean as they get. And it's on sale right now for, I think, with Amazon discount for $6 instead of $9. My rule is I don't need to talk about it. I just need to like it. <laughs> and that's... Thank you, Debbie. I can't wait to see you. Yeah. Mm. Art is a man of few words. That's true. All right, but his words really matter. I what? Your words matter. I choose them carefully. <laughs> That's good. I don't waste words, but Art is eating it all. Sweet Jesus, says Anya. And if you don't <laughs> give me the camera back, I'm That's right. clear the Snooze, place. you lose. It's okay. It's now Art. It's now Art Farturo approved, says Maggie. That's <laughs> no, Uncle Farturo. Uncle Maggie. Farturo, thank you. Uncle Farturo I approved. My first name. <laughs> it tastes the same, Sabrina. I'm still deciding a protein powder. I think I found one without natural flavors. It's um, Garden of Life, organic, raw unflavored. Every other protein powder that's flavored has natural flavors except the Food Babes uh, Truvani. 
Art is looking sexy, says Sherry. Wow. Ooh, ooh. Teal right. Art. Uncle Teal. Uncle Teal? Oh, Teal, yeah. Yeah. Teal Farturo. That's right. So. Uh, Margie, I don't know about the Aldi protein powder. My guess is no. Because I want protein powder that's either plant-based and organic with no natural flavors, or if you're going to get whey protein powder, it should be grass-fed. And every brand at the grocery store and even on Amazon has natural flavors. But Truvani doesn't. It's expensive. And Garden of Life Raw. Protein powder, unflavored, looks amazing. Uh, Jessica Alford said, Art just named your podcast, Bobby. The spice is right. <laughs> is your cookbook good to avoid type 1 diabetes? Well, I think type 1 is the one you're, born, one with, you're born with. So no, type 2, yes. I've had a number of people who said they're off their diabetes medication or greatly reduced their diabetes medication because the keto and paleo diet is perfect for that and you don't feel like you're sacrificing flavor. That is the beauty of it. Once again, Amazon link down below. If you live in Paris, or France, or Nice, or Monaco, or Israel, or Australia, search Flav City on your local Amazon. It ships everywhere. But that's why I'm so excited about this book. It's helping people lose weight and get off those damn expensive medications. And there's 125 low-carb keto recipes that actually taste good. So what we did today is we took the chicken recipe from this page, normally served with dairy-free cream spinach, which is with bacon and mushrooms. And I said, hey, I'm gonna serve that chicken with the green beans recipe from the cauliflower steak. But I mean, guys, honestly, you can land on any recipe. Look, I'm not even looking where I turn to. Boom. Boom. Biscuits with strawberry butter, sweetened with stevia, and citrus herb butter. I think those biscuits would have gone really well with this body. Art says that every week. That. Boom. Keto coconut shrimp with uh, chicharrons and a uh, mayo dipping sauce with sriracha. Boom. Those Keto, good. so good. They go really well with the biscuits. Probably. I haven't made this. <laughs> Keto uh, stuffed peppers. Every recipe has macros, which was a pain in my butt to calculate. Every recipe has photos. Let's see, oh, look at that one. That's Desi, that's not, that's not a recipe. Boom. Alabama white barbecue chicken with black soybeans, allowed with moderation on the keto diet. And then let's go to a breakfast one, a random breakfast one. Right. Sausage oh, yeah. McMuffins with the biscuits. What kind of biscuits are they? Those are the Cheddar Bay biscuits. Really? Oh, funny. <laughs> Look Imagine at this. That. These are meatball hash, mini meatball hash with root vegetables that are keto friendly and poached eggs. And this is <laughs> a uh, frittata. Joseph Finley. Lunch lady says those biscuits are mm, good. <laughs> <laughs> Lunch lady land. land. Sloppy Joe's. Slop, uh, sloppy Joe's. I know you boys like them. Extra oh, sloppy. Nice. Let me check on Rose. Give me a second, you guys. All right. Hopefully she's up. Okay, rapid fire question time. If you can fire a question. Okay, I do not know how Bobby cleans his giant cutting board. I assume he... No. Puts it in his rather large sink over there and oh, washes it I with lots of uh, oh, hot soapy water. Dries it off. Probably lets air dry a bit. Um, let's see here. Put on the selfie camera. Any other questions? When is your next cookbook coming out featuring Mexican keto recipes? Any thoughts on that one, Bobby? <laughs> that sounds tough. Yeah, okay. We have some Mexican recipes in the book, but 100% Mexican, that sounds tough. Refined hey. olive oil from Costco, good for deep frying. Um, not ideal, but yes, it is Bobby approved. Okay. It's probably one of the better oils they have there because they don't have expeller pressed oils. Hello, Brownsville, Texas, welcome. Um, you guys, Desi, I forgot, wanted some boiled potatoes with a salt and butter crust. Oh. So let's get that going real quick. See, Desi is on a slightly higher starch diet right now. If you're on keto and you're pregnant or breastfeeding, don't be on keto because it really limits your breast milk production and starches are very good for that. So what I do for potatoes, these are organic potatoes. Always start potatoes in cold water. And by the way, Rose is sleeping, unfortunately. I'd love to bring her up. Maybe she'll wake up in the meantime. So always start these in cold water because if you put potatoes into boiling water, the outside is gonna overcook by the time the inside is done. So that's rule number one. Rule number two of potato club, just like chicken club, is salt. Salt, super aggressive. This will be quick because I have a power burner on here that has a huge flame. 
So think of it like pasta. What do we salt the pasta water to? What? What do we salt it to? I can't hear you. Exactly, the sea. Thank you. I know Maggie got that one, right? We salt it to the sea. The same thing with this. I'm going to salt it really aggressively because that's really the only time the salt can penetrate and permeate into the potatoes. It's not going to make it salty. It's going to season it perfectly. I get them out. I drain them. I put them back in the hot pan. I put a ton of butter, really good salt, and parsley. I close the lid and the Potatoes are like a sponge. They soak in all that yummy uh, butter and it's delicious. I got a musical intro for this next comment. Tell me. On Wisconsin. Patricia <laughs> Tron says, hello from Madison, Wisconsin. Saw you in the alumni magazine oh, yeah. last week. Yeah, I think, let me grab that. That's really funny. So I got contacted by... And Patricia, be happy. I'm a proud Illini and I just sang the beginning of your song. I'm nice. So so as far as this I go. is the official Wisconsin magazine. And they contacted me a few months ago because they wrote an article. It's actually really funny. It pertains to me perfectly. It's called, You Majored in What? And so here it is. Go Badgers. Panda, Panda's Corner. Right? Corner. Because if you turn to my oh, page. No, no, no. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you turn to my page my here. You. Bobby Parrish. There we go. Class of 2000. Majored in finance, investment, and baking. And what am I doing now? I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> so... If you read the article and they actually cut out the best part, yeah. I pretty much said college for me and for most people I think is a waste of time and money. But they did leave in my quote here that said, <clears throat> Parrish encourages college age kids to test the waters before committing to a major or a job. Whatever you are passionate in, explore doing that. I think if you want to be a doctor or a lawyer or something like that, yeah, you got to go to college, you got to learn. But how many kids go to college and commit four years of their life and six figures of debt, and they really don't know what they want to do, and they graduate, and they have no idea, and they end up doing something different, right? So I think instead, maybe don't go to college immediately and start doing something you're passionate in. What do they always tell you on the job anyway? Forget what you learned in school. You're going to learn here. Well, that's true in food. That's true in even technology. Go do it. See if you like it. And then say, hey, is this something I need to go spend four years learning, or can I learn from the ground up? In my up opinion and my expertise, I find that nine times out of 10, you can learn more from the ground up, starting here and working up, than spending four years at an institution. And I believe also that student debt right now is the biggest crisis in this country and the bubble is going to pop just like the mortgage industry did 10 years ago. And it's going to be ugly. It's going to be ugly, my friends. So I had a great time there. And I actually was a stock and options trader for over 10 years before I started doing this. And then in 2017, I quit that job. I worked for myself. I was fortunate enough to work from home, but I didn't even need a college degree to do that because traders is all about instinct and intuition. I didn't need to go to college for that. I still had a great time, but if I could do it again, I wouldn't go. That's my personal opinion. Thank you, Angie. Preach it, right? Thank you. See, wow, a lot of people are uh, seconding my uh, opinion. Absolutely. Hmm. So true. Lawyer here, not working as a lawyer. Exactly. See, shadowing is so important. How did you segue from finance to cooking? So I started Flea City with Desi seven years ago this year. And my goal was to get on the Food Network. And I tried out for Food Network Star and I didn't get in, right? And I was devastated. And I told Desi, let's just start a YouTube channel and see what happens. So we started a YouTube channel. We had no idea what we were doing, right? So we learned it all ourselves. And there's another example of learning yourself. We live in a world now that is so exciting. When I was in college, I graduated in 2000, there was no internet really, right? Now, go on Google, go on YouTube, you can learn any craft you want. So Desi learned how to film and edit. I learned about production skills. I mean, the Food Network was my kind of like culinary school. And so we started filming videos and nobody watched the videos in the beginning, right? But surely over time, we learned how to refine our skill more. People started watching. We started doing meal prep videos. We started taking off. We started doing keto meal prep, started taking off. Then we did the uh, grocery videos, took off again. So in 2017, I said to myself, you know what? I see this as a business. As much as I loved trading, I was more passionate in food. And it was like this new business that it started off as a passion project. I never wanted to make $1 off it, but then it became a business. And I saw all this influencer marketing, all these ad dollars going to digital. And I said, you know what? I bet I can turn this into a pretty big business. January 2017, I said, no more trading. I focused on this. Ever since I focused on that, the business has taken off. 
Desi quit her job a year later, it took off again. And ever since Rose was born, it's taken off. Art has taken us to the next level. So it's amazing how something that started as a passion project is now my full-time job and it can support you know our lifestyle. YouTube, our blog, and social media, it's an amazing world. I'm so happy I'm living now because 20 years ago, none of this was available, right? Blogging just started. But I think it's such an exciting time to learn and live. And that's why I say, if you're passionate in anything, you can do that in today's world. Whereas 10, 20 years ago, you could not. So I thank God every single day and I wake up that I'm alive right now. Laura Sibrian, $2, super Aww. chat. Going to stop by when you come to Austin. Oh, yes. We're gonna announce the uh, meetup this weekend. I'm gonna keep the chicken just warm in the oven here. I have a warm setting so on my much. mini oven. Because we gotta do these potatoes for Desi. And I think I gotta have to sneak a little bite here. <laughs> My, Michael Williams says, can you two go as natural flavors for Halloween? <laughs> that is so fun. I don't know how, what we would do, but no, that's a good idea. You know what? So I have some free time here. It's kind of fun to talk. Still a bunch of people here. So I can't tell you how many food scientists and people who disagree with what I'm doing send me messages on Instagram. They call me a fear mongerer and that I don't know anything. And they say, oh, the quickest way they get internet fame is to scare people with chemicals. I had followers before I started doing that, okay? And these people consistently badger me. They go through my comments on Instagram and they troll me. I have nothing but love for people. I always say, haters gonna hate, hate, hate. I'm just gonna shake, 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 shake it off, shake it off. But it's just so funny how they attack me. I'm not lying. I'm not spreading misinformation. I'm literally telling you What's on the ingredients? If you believe in your heart that natural flavors are real, then I'm sorry, you're misinformed. Natural flavors are artificial flavors. That's it. There's nothing about it. When I tell people about other ingredients, that is the fact, right? I'm not libeling or slandering anyone. I'm talking about ingredients. That's it. But it's just so funny how these people want to troll me. It's ridiculous. Thank you, Samantha. Oh, Nancy, you're late. You're late. Bobby, you speak life. Can I live? <laughs> Thank you, Anya. Can we it's, turn the air on in here? It's pretty hot in here, isn't it? Jeez, what happened to the AC? Uh, somebody asked, is there a difference in baking powders and baking sodas? Well, those two products are fundamentally different. Correct. And then when it comes to baking powder, you can have a single action or double action. Right. So there's some differences there. Yeah, it's really I interesting. Baking sodas are typically all the same, though. It's. I think so. Sodium bicarbonate. I think so. so. And I think, I think, it's either baking soda or baking powder isn't paleo, but you can make baking soda with part baking powder and part cream of tartar, I believe. Bake, baking powder is cream of tartar and baking soda. Okay. Yeah, so baking powder is not paleo, but you can make the paleo version. But there's some other, I mean, there's multiple versions of uh, baking powder. Yes, there are multiple. Because um, Desi's been doing a lot of paleo recipes lately. Dessert recipes. She's putting the final touches on a uh, paleo apple cake. I ate the last of it last it's night, good. actually. It's good. I mean, she made another one, Art. Oh, cool. And it was even better. Nice. Had more moisture. The apple pieces were folded in. Yeah, was, that was my next question. Yeah, it was, it was really good. The last good. one was good, too, though. Uh-huh. This one's better. You didn't leave it on the burner, though, did you? <laughs> oh, my God. Tell them what happened. <laughs> Dusty spent all this time making the cake, and then when it came out of the oven... Bobby left the burner on from uh, the live stream and the cake was sitting on top of the burner. On low, but 45 minutes. Yeah. When he went to move it, like, okay, it's probably cooled down by now. Oh no, it's still pretty hot. I better use some towels. I'm like, what kind of cake stays yeah. hot that long? <laughs> and had this big scorch mark uh, uh, right where it was. It was ridiculous. It was so it funny. It tasted pretty good though. It did. But it was funny because I felt it warm before that. And I'm like, oh, it's weird. Why is it warm? It's been out of the oven for 20 minutes. But it didn't register in my head because like, I was cleaning from the live stream. And then finally we took it off. And it wasn't even then. We took it off, it sat there and I turned around eventually. I'm like, hey, why is this burner on? Oh wait, that was the burner where the cake was. And so the middle of the bottom was torched. Simply Beautiful went to Walmart and spent $120 on the items from your videos. I love to hear it. Those are quality items. I, these grocery stores, they kick us out. They should be paying us. We're driving so much revenue their way. It's crazy, you guys, crazy. We were at Whole Foods today, if you didn't hear me earlier, filming the coffee review video. We were there for four hours. 
we maybe did 30 minutes of filming, 45 minutes of filming. The rest of the time was waiting for employees to pass by, waiting for employees to stop stocking the area we were in, and then stopping mid-sentence because the employees walked by. If I had permission to go in these grocery stores, I can be so much more efficient. It is so tiring sitting there and waiting and uh, we're always out of the corner of our eyes looking for Waldo's, right? So Art is always looking, I'm always looking. It's pretty crazy. Joy Williams says a pineapple upside down cake sounds good. Ooh. You know what? I've actually never had that before. So Art, look, the water came to a boil already. It's because I got this power boil here. So what I'm gonna do is just switch it to here and we might as well just stay alive. So I find, remember, heavily salted water. I'm gonna cook them just until they're cooked through. I put a knife in them, and I don't want the knife to fall out so easily. I want there to be a little resistance there. Viva la resistance! And then I'll put some more butter. <laughs> That's the theme of today. Prashant says that, uh, Prashant says, some, someday Waldos will recognize you and be a fan. Some of them already are. Well, yeah, so, oh my God. So we're really, really, I guess blessed to have such good fans. So when we go to the grocery store now, we always get recognized. At the Walmart store last week, eight or nine different people stopped us and said, hey, we love your videos. It was super cool. Today, we were doing the podcast at Walmart, no, I'm sorry, Costco. Costco. And we went to cover the uh, monk fruit sweetener because now Costco has a Lacanto. And as I'm walking up to it, some guy and his wife are like, hey, I'm buying this because of you. I watched your video, so I have to buy this. Super cool. And then today, we're at Whole Foods, and we're waiting for the Waldos to leave. And some guy recognized me. And he goes, Bobby, my wife is a huge fan. When she found out the name of your daughter, she was hysterically crying because she thought it was so beautiful. For an hour. For an hour, he said. And I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. She's in the car in the uh, parking lot. Do you mind if she comes up and meets you? I'm like, of course. Anyone can meet me. Came up. Super nice girl. We took some photos together. So it's really fun to run into fans at the grocery store. I just hope the Waldos don't start to recognize us because that's bad news. Joy or says, I talked to Chosen Foods. They might sponsor you all. They're going to check you out. They, are, they do sponsor YouTube cooks if they're good. Okay. Well, it's funny because I have their contract and they send me some mayonnaise once in a while. So hopefully they do. This is Chosen Foods. It's just as good as uh, Primal Kitchen, and it's on sale right now. If you're Amazon, uh, actually not even Amazon Prime. It's a regular on sale, but if you're an Amazon Prime member, it's 10% additional off. It's a great deal. Great deal. Um, I got this today at Costco. So if you watch the uh, deli meat video, I try to buy organic deli meat. This is organic turkey. You guys, look at the ingredients. It's just Organic turkey breast, water, and sea salt. The price, you guys? Art was not a big fan of the name. Look at the name. It's very exciting, isn't it? Why would you name yourself Plainsville? Maybe it's irony. Like they, they I don't know. know. So because, it's, because it's a few ingredients? Plain Jane. You guys, it was $8 a pound. The organic Applegate is about $6 for four ounces. That comes out to $24 a pound versus eight. Thus, he's been eating a lot of... Um, uh, griddle sandwiches with turkey meat. I'll show you the bread we're using for that. I couldn't believe the price. I was so stoked. Now, if you want a great bread, obviously buy Sprouted, but Desi eats gluten-free bread. This brand of gluten-free bread is best in class. It's called Canyon Bakehouse, right? And for sandwiches, the Mountain White. Oh my God, you guys, you can't even tell it's gluten-free. The texture is amazing, and you've never seen ingredients like this for gluten-free bread. Look at this, clean as a whistle. They're using extra virgin olive oil. Are you kidding me? This bread, it's usually in the freezer aisle, is the best gluten-free bread on the market. If you're not gluten-free, you know, sprouted bread is not the best for uh, sandwiches and grilled cheese sandwiches because it's very nutty and sprouted, but Silver Hills makes a sprouted white style bread. I think it's called is it Little Big Bread or something? It's in the blue package, and it's more of a sandwich-like bread. That makes a mean grilled cheese sandwich. And you want sprouted breads because sprouted grains are easier for your body to digest, and your body derives more nutrition from sprouted bread. Always go sprouted unless you're gluten-free. Uh, Food for Life makes sprouted gluten-free. It's not my favorite texture, but that is amazing. Joe mentioned uh, Dave's Killer Bread. 
Uh, yeah, Dave's Killer is great, but it's not sprouted. Sprouted's best, Dave's Killer's second best because it's 100% whole wheat and has seeds. No, that is not keto. It's not, it's for Desi. Desi's eating starches now to help with breast milk production. I always have to explain that to people because they see me on stories and they're like, wait a second, are potatoes keto? Woohoo! I'm like, no, 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 they're not. It's for Desi's special diet, right? And I did a, I did a rice version, the real rice version of this dish on Instagram stories last week and people went crazy. So this is golden turmeric cauliflower rice. I made it with jasmine rice and put raisins in the boiling water and the coconut water while it cooked. You guys, it's the best rice you'll ever taste. In the book, it doesn't have raisins or rice. It has cauliflower rice and it's served with Moroccan chicken stew. Look at that photo. I think that's your favorite recipe. Um, that is, where'd you hear that, Art? That is correct. Isn't that photo gorgeous? You guys, do you realize for this cookbook, I made every recipe in this cookbook in this kitchen right here, and then Desi and Art took the photos in the second bedroom. The bedroom that Donnie, Desi's mother, was sleeping in, that's where we took the photos. Everything was in-house. Art took the cover of the book all by himself. Desi was four months pregnant. Rose is right there in that photo. That was like literally right before her belly exploded. We got the shot in. And it's a book that looks like it's done by a big production, a Food Network book. It was done by us. We have a great publisher in Coral Gables called Mango Publishing. They let us have full autonomy with the book. It was a lot of fun. Um, I don't want to spoil it yet, but I already thought of the follow-up book. I think it's going to come out in June of next year. And hint, it has to do... Oh! I'm boiling your potatoes. You guys, this is the beauty of going overtime because someone has woke up from their slumber. You did, didn't you? Oh, look at this face. Everyone say hello to Rose, honey. Hello. Hey, when I checked on you a while ago, baby, you were sleeping. Huh? You're like, wait, is the live stream going on? Uh, am I sleeping through the live stream? No, no, that's not good. <laughs> Mommy, I need my FaceTime. <laughs> Rose almost loves the uh, light as much as me. But look, as soon as she comes in front of the lights, she's glued to the camera. And you can really see these big cheeks. I call these cheeks guanciale because they're like the uh, cured pork jaw of it Italy. I want to eat them. So she's, uh, tomorrow she'll be about three months and one week. She's clocking in at about 14, five-ish. And uh, she's sleeping eight hours a night. How happy are you for that, Bubba? Oh huh? my God, so happy. She started sleeping eight hours a night Friday night on her birthday. And she's just so cute. She's laughed. Today was the first day she actually smiled and made a noise, right? And laughed and made a noise. Normally she just laughs quiet. Today she made a noise. And she's just such a smiley, happy baby. We absolutely adore her. Uh, she's just so fantastic. So, um, yeah. So, babe, I just want you to taste this Hi, chicken. Guys. So this is the butter-basted chicken from the recipe book. It's such a silly good recipe. And I'm going to give you a bite of blistered uh, green beans with it and a little bit of cashews. you got to try this, babe. It is next level deliciousness. Mm. Isn't that crazy? I mean, it's cold now, but... Mm. I love that chicken, babe. Uh, it's so good. It's the sexiest mm. way to eat chicken breast ever. Mm, the green beans are delicious, babe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll pass the Irish butter <laughs> for Rose's uh, rolls. <laughs> I joke that Rose has more rolls in a bakery. And yeah, I'll spread that Irish butter, grass fed butter all over. You should see her legs. When I change her diaper, I can't even see like her butt. Her rolls are like boom, 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 boom. I call her the Michelin woman. And I, I play with them and she's so strong. When she flexes her legs, I, I can't bend it. I'm like, girl, relax, stop flexing on me. Cause she's so strong. Oh my God, we love her so much. Sweet pea. She's <laughs> staring at the computer now. <laughs> Uh, is she from She's reading the comments. Is she from Romania? No. Rose is from Chicago. Desi is from Bulgaria. Very, very close. <laughs> Let's see. Happy birthday. Thank you, Maggie. Rose's three month birthday. Rose from is Romania. so lovely. <laughs> it's Bulgaria. <laughs> Chubby baby, Rosie. that's right. Mm -hmm. We love you too, Juliana. I was just uh they were asking about the next book. I uh, don't want to spoil it, but a hint, it has something to do with what's going on here. That's all I'll say. I think June of next year, we'll have it out. It's going to be really exciting. So those potatoes have maybe like 10 more minutes left. 
I'm gonna start serving the chicken because Desi's hungry. And if Desi's hungry, that means Rose is hungry. Rose is nonstop, you guys. We gotta feed her, otherwise she gets angry. That means daddy's gotta feed mommy. So that's it, you guys. Saturday, the coffee review video is coming out. Sunday, I don't know what's coming out yet. But um, this weekend, if you live in Chicago, come to the East Lakeview Art Festival. I'll be there all weekend doing cooking demos. Just Google the name and you'll find uh, the festival. And that's it. So Desi Rose and Art and I say we love you very much. Oh, love you guys. Anna, Dollar super chat. Ethiopian siren. What a beautiful family. Thank, Thank you, you so much, you guys. I uh, had a great time. We're going to crush dinner and we will see you next week. But until then, hashtag keep on cooking. Man love and peace. Say peace, Rose. <laughs> She's staring at the comments. Look at her. Can she do the peace? She's reading the comments. Can you do peace, Rose? Huh? Nah. She's doing a very pious pose right now. <laughs> All right. We're the luckiest parents like, in the room, who's Katie. There? Like, <laughs> crazy. Luckiest parents That's in the world. You, sweetie. That's right. That's right, Rosie. You're a uh, right. sensation, Rose. We done. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Woohoo! Bye, guys. Thanks for tuning in. See you later. Peace.